Greetings, ladies and metagents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. This channel is chugging all the way to 100k subscribers. If you haven't, please subscribe and help us get there. Also, thanks to you all liking and commenting, the channel is doing better than ever. Thank you very much. Anyways, on to the story. Dragon's Council, written by Dark Prince 10 the two human diplomats shifted and fidgeted nervously in the antechamber of the Galactic Council. Humanity had been excited to prepare their bid to join the Council. It was generally agreed that it would be likely to be a shoe in provided they made a good impression with the select members of the High Council. I've got to say, I never thought that I'd be standing here, said Hamish, straightening his tie and his formal suit. Next to him, Sarai smoothed out some of the wrinkles in her dress and quickly checked her communicator. Should be any moment now, she murmured. Amish was still wide-eyed, staring at the declarations and carvings in the crystal windows of the antechamber. Here and there were art pieces, holographic or physical, tucked away into alcoves, and the effect was almost intoxicating. The sheer history here, he said. There is so much. That's the thing that's amazed me the most with his meeting aliens, is seeing how many of their cultures and species produce art, and just how fantastic and varied it all is. Sarai nodded, taking a moment to glance around at the artwork as well. It's a shame that they had a dark age all those centuries ago. Otherwise, could you imagine how much more there might be in here? She turned to her mish directly, stepping forward so that her low murmur would not be heard by the undetected microphones. How is the extraction team doing? Do they have a confirmation? Henry checked his wrist communicator. There was a display on it that simply showed four squares each one showing a red X. Not yet, he said. No confirmation. But if we timed it right, we should have it in the hand momentarily. Sarai sighed, grumbling. They were supposed to have it in hand an hour ago. I, my, I can't imagine that the treasury would be exactly easy to venture into and take a peek around. Otherwise, everyone would do it. Sarai snorted and opened her mouth. Before she could say anything else, there was a gentle chime, and a voice came over the speaker. Delegates of Earth Petition, please make your way in and welcome. Hamish and Sarai stepped forward through the opening doors into an enormous circular amphitheater. There were hundreds upon hundreds of seats, chairs, desks, and similar stations for a dizzying array of alien species. While some of these were empty, humanity had endeared themselves to many upon introduction to the wider galactic community, and so... There were quite a few supporters showing up to see how this bid turned out, and to celebrate them when it inevitably was approved. Looking over to the seats of the High Council representatives, Sarai murmured back to her mission. I see four of the five seats are filled. We've got a Vosh, a Grayan, and a Carrick. Oh, and a Sulian. Her mish put on a smile, but his voice was uncertain. That's two solid votes for, but also a solid vote against with Grayan. The Carrick will almost inevitably vote along with whoever is the strongest voice in the group. For now, I think they'll be leaning in our favor. It's all good. His voice cut off as there was a swooping swoosh of wings and a roar that echoed around the chamber. Shit, said Amish and Sarai in unison under their breath. The dragon swooped in a single showy pass through the amphitheater, before turning in midair to alight itself upon the final council chair. The anti-gravity generators of the hovering platform strained under the additional weight, and the two humans could feel the entire platform perspectively tilt slightly in the direction of the enormous lizard that had landed on the one end. Of course, with our luck, it's going to be trash, but, murmured Hamish back, think of our luck, of all the draconic council members, to rush as the one we were stuck with. Sarai mused on this for a second before her smile became slightly wider and far more genuine. The desperate discussions and background conversations in the chamber ceased as the dragon held up a claw. The other High Council members looked at it as it began to speak. Honored representatives, we are here to weigh the application of humans into the Galactic Council. This species' home planet is host to approximately 12 billion of these individuals. And they have a number of colonies throughout their solar system, as well as nearby systems. Humans have shown that they are willing to cooperate 
and abide by our rules, befriending many of you in the council already. And here, there was a murmur of agreement and anticipation. They have, in the best traditions of the council, shown themselves to be able to peacefully coexist with all other members of the council. It seems like the other representatives within the council are murmuring with anticipation and perceiving this was going well. But Hamish and Sarai could tell that the other shoe was about to drop. However, the dragon continued, Hamish murmured. There it is. Earth was once the homeworld of my species as well, before we fled due to the actions of none other than the humans. There was a round of gasps and murmurs. This part of the dragon's history had not necessarily been hidden, but had not been emphasized or widely spoken of, even as humans were emerging onto the galactic stage. Yes, for humans attacked and hunted us without mercy, killing untold thousands of my kin, until we fled into the depths of space and hoped that might lend some salvation from their bloodthirst. The tenor of the room had changed. There were still a few staunch supporters of humanity who were shaking their heads in disbelief, but many more had mouths open in horror, or even startling to mumble and whisper angrily about this revelation. The humans raised their hands to address this accusation. It is true that we had some conflicts with humans and dragons in the past, but I do not believe there's evidence that those problems would continue. The dragon cut in again with a roar. Oh, true. We left several hundred years ago. But even as recently as earlier this century, you humans have made stories and media portraying us as villains to be slain. The dragon gestured to a holographic screen, and it began a prepared slideshow. The picture showed various roaring dragons attacking humans in movies, a few of them ones that Sarai and Hamish recognized from watching as children. If you villainize us to such a degree in your stories, what assurances do we have that you would not turn upon us and attempt to rekindle that bloodthirst once more? Amish could feel his heart racing, but at a glance at his communicator showed not one but two of the four boxes had a green check marks on them. He nodded towards Sarai, who glanced down as well, her eyes widening. Excellent, she whispered. I'll take it from here. Stepping forward in front of Hamish, she raised her hand, not to the dragon and the high council, but to the remaining members of the galactic council. Esteemed representatives, the story of humanity and dragons has, it is true, never been one of peace and harmony for the most part. However, a great deal of this strife has come from the human urge to explore and our innate curiosity to find out what is hidden. That clashes with the dragon's love for hoarding that which they hide. She turned to stare at the dragon dead in the eye, especially that which they have taken for themselves. Turning back to the crowd in the assembled auditorium, she said, When humanity first learned of the Galactic Council and also of the survival of the dragons, we could not help but notice that there was a dearth of artifacts from amongst the various beautiful arts and crafts of your cultures, what you collectively call your Dark Age, corresponding to the period around a century or two after the dragons would have made contact with the greater galactic community. It struck us as odd, yet there were few explanations, just museums that had been destroyed with no survivors left, or archaeological sites that had been ravaged and looted. So, it was with that we began to have our suspicions, and set forth to validate or to disprove those suspicions. The dragon snorted, smoke and a small jet of flame blowing from its nose as it growled, you dare accuse us of theft and of defiling the artifacts and histories of other races. That seems much more like a human thing to do, I would say. Sarai smiled grimly at him. This is indeed a great accusation and would be a reprehensible one to make, she said as the murmurs grew in the crowd. But we did not come here without evidence. She turned to her mesh, who had been fiddling with the broadcast settings on his wrist communicator. The slideshow the dragon put up on the hollow projector was replaced, this time with a live camera feed from the infiltration team that had managed to breach the interior of the dragon's fortified treasury. It was a modern-day horde, 
kept within a remote, heavily armed space station. This is a live feed from our investigators, Sarai said. I believe these may look familiar to you, she said, as the camera slowly and carefully panned over jeweled and finely wrought metal crafts, jewelry, coins, and icons. Here and there were larger pieces of artwork and canvases and other media, and as the camera continued, murmuring began to grow, soon becoming shouting throughout the council amphitheater, as the various cultures there began to recognize their own artifacts amongst them. This is but one station, of but one dragon, Sarai continued, as the draconic delegate in front of her glowered and growled deep in the back of his throat. This delegate, in fact, she said, pointing an accusing finger at Torush. We know the location of dozens of other stations just like this, and while we have not pierced their defenses, we suspect them to contain much of the same loot from amongst all of your histories. Things that were taken from you, they now hoard. The uproar amongst the delegates had further escalated, with many calling for the investigation and impeachment of the draconic delegate, further still demanding the expulsion of dragons altogether, and even a few bloodthirsty racers were demanding their public execution for such an outrage. Sarai held up her hand for a calm once more, mostly succeeding in quieting down the raging masses of delegates. I understand your frustrations, for we also experienced the same outrage back when we coexisted on our home world. I would like to be the first to recommend the dragons peacefully and completely return all that was stolen, and an enforceable promise to never do so again. But I would ask that they remain members in good standing with the council. The magnanimous proposition had desired effect. There were nods of agreement, and Sarai was pleased to see the heated calls for execution of the dragons had fallen silent. However, she and her mish could feel a smug curl of satisfaction as a dragon began to sputter and roar in outrage. While not many facts of dragons had survived from olden times, it appeared that the accounts of their jealousy for their horde and reluctance to lose even a single piece of it were indeed true to their word. The dragon whipped his head around to face them, and over his mouth an ominous glow quickly built in his throat. At the jet of flame he unleashed, a pair of council guards leapt forward, and a blue shielding sprang up to provide protective bubble for the humans who cowered as the fire washed over. As they stood unharmed and the smoke cleared, the shape of the dragon could be seen quickly soaring out the way it came in. Hamish turned to the nearest council god. I suggest you lock down his ship, or else you're liable to not be able to catch him once he gets into open space. The god nodded, issuing commands to their communicator. There was already a rising wave of hubbub and crosstalk echoing in the chamber of the amphitheater as races reached out to their own historians and archaeologists with news of what had been revealed. But Amish knew that they still had to make sure that they did this the right way. He called for attention in front of the council once more. I believe the matter of our acceptance has not been confirmed. I have a suspicion I know how the esteemed draconic delegate feels about it, he said, nodding towards the open door the dragon had fled through. Both Sarai and a number of other aliens chuckled. But what say you, he said to the other High Council members. There was a mere glance between them, and all four raised their hands with a resounding cry of I. Almost immediately, there was an echo by an I from the rest of the chamber, and then a roaring cheer for the daring humans. You realize that this is likely earning the ire of their entire species, and then not in substantial battle feat warned one of the High Council members as they exited from the chamber and walked to the plaza outside. Ah, uh, that's all right. Humans and our long history with dragons have done more than just loot a few hordes here and there. Unable to resist the flair for the dramatic, she tagged her communicator. This is Sarai. On your marks, Captain, please drop your cloaking. An appreciative gasp went up from a number of alien races as the human battlecruiser in low orbit uncloaked, revealing a brilliant chrome ship nearly a mile long and thin, only a few hundred feet across. Now I'd like to introduce you to the Spear of St. George, she said proudly. One of the guards came stumbling forward, smoke coming from their decorative cape and armored plating. The, the, the delegate escaped and uh, destroyed almost half of the docking platforms in the East Ring. There was a quavering in the alien's voice as they continued. They killed dozens, maybe a hundred, just bathed the whole platform in flames until nothing was between them and their ship. Sarai frowned and Amish stepped forward. 
My understanding of council law is that murderously dangerous criminals, such as our former delegate here, must be captured alive if possible, but to be stopped under any circumstances. Would you all agree that this would be the case? There was a series of solemn nods and outright fists shaking as the ship in the distance. They could see the dragon ship, a broad and jagged craft seemingly hewn from rock itself, taking off. The docking port's defense lasers fired on it, glancing off the dense stone and little to no effect. In that case, esteemed delegates of the council, I would like to demonstrate for the first time in 900 years how humans slay dragons. There was a ripple felt through space-time, almost a gravetic lurch, pulling everything momentarily towards the far end of the human battleship. The rippling seemed to intensify around the base of it, light warping until abruptly the clouds it was breathed in parted, shattering into feather-like shards that appeared like a pair of wings framed in a thin vessel. The front end of the ship glowed a blinding blue for a brief moment, before a lance of energy, barely narrower than the ship itself, shot out. The beam smashed into the dragon ship, which provided only a moment of resistance before exploding. And then, the explosion too was consumed by the beam of energy, as it flared through the sky. Hamish turned to the assembly of representatives, it is unfortunate that our comrade chose to act as he did. We do hope that the remainder of his kind will be more amendable to making the appropriate reparations. Then he held up his wrist communicator. Spear of St. George, you are clear to begin the sweep. Good hunting. End of story. I would just quickly like to thank the T5 peeps, Dragon Soup, Cold War Boomer Waffen, Severin Cerberus, Red Panda 121, Leslie 517, Bushmaster 177, Casper Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Sans the Skeleton, Lightjock, Dragzoon WRE, and Lord Azrakal. Thank you very much.